Hello and welcome to the Visionless Science YouTube channel, the channel where you get to see all the things I can't. So in today's one I figured I'd go over my CLC machine here. So I did a brief overview of this in a previous video. This was originally a grinder box which we then upgraded into this. So obviously I've got a cookie here with my router and as you can see here hopefully should be very clear what it's meant for. So I got smoothed off there. As we go down here, it's going rough. So I'll have a go over exactly how I use this now. So here we've got the track for the the uh, router. So obviously on mine I have the Festool guide rail. This is just to help me uh, keep it safe. So obviously the router slides along there as we go. Um, and attached to the router here um, is a extraction port. So this is a four inch one. And of course, as we go along, it's always catching any dust that shoots across and gets sucked up. This is to prevent any from shooting out the box. As we can see here, as we go along, we've put this sheet here to stop any from jumping out as well. So this is a, a bit of a problem. Um, obviously this is gonna catch any loose dust that's coming out, but any chippings due to the amount of force, this is there to stop that. On the back there, we've also got two different um, ducts. They are five inch ones. Originally, I had one in the center, but we found as we were going that whoop, it would build up in whatever corner it was we were pulling the router on. So if I was pulling the router from the right side back towards me, There'd be a big pile up in the middle, which would then cause a ramp and all the chippings would shoot out of the box. Obviously on the back here, as I said earlier, I've upgraded it. So we've got a T-junction here. I've got that one set up on that side so that when I'm using the router, like, most of the chippings go there because that's obviously where it's going to get most of the suction. And then this part over here is going to catch any stragglers that go off. When it comes to grinding as well, this is useful because again, having the pipe at the front stops you from breathing in any dust as it catches a lot of it. And any dust that gets shot into the corner, again, is getting sucked away by that. So it's a lot more useful than having one pipe in the middle or just one pipe on either end. You realistically need one on the back and front. As I mentioned last time, we've got the holes in the baseboard here, which I use the Workmate dogs for wedging any pieces we have in here. They also are connected to another extraction pipe, which is down here. This wonderful pipe here. So any dust that settles on the top there is sucked away so there's no build-ups. If we just go back to the slider now, I've taken the router off it. So here's the guide rail here on both ends. You can see here I've got dowels in just to stop the actual rail from um, coming off. So it'll always stay in place. I've got it so it's going along the edge of the gap here. This was originally designed for a 60 mil uh, CNC bit, which is effectively what I've been turning this into. But then it turns out that not all CNC cutters fit onto routers. So I've had to settle for a 50 mil bit. So this is a bit big but it still does the job fine. If we go to the end here, so on the side here, this is actually a riser. So that just pops out again with dowels. There we go. And then you've got the runner to keep it in its tracks there. So the reason we've got this is obviously different um, pieces with different heights. And I want the router to be, router, to be as close to the wood that we're trimming as possible, again, to keep the dust down. Because the further away from it it is, the more dust is gonna be shooting out everywhere. Obviously, I can't see what I'm doing with this. So I have to manage all the cabling and ducting that's being moved about. Because, well, last thing you want is an accident with this thing. So obviously the piping here, we've got tied up. This is because as we're sliding this back and forth, two things can happen. Either it's gonna fall off the back and it's gonna be struggle, it's gonna make it hard for me to move it, or it drops down the back there. And as I try to push it, 
back, it gets stuck and the pipe won't let me slide the router all the way back. The other thing as well, we've got the power cable going off the side there. Again, that was getting stuck in the back there. So having it out that way, it keeps it safe for everyone using it, even if you can't see what you're doing. So I've gone on about the ventilation on the box and the box itself, as well as the sliding mechanism. So how do I actually level the cookies then? So slide it until the highest point. See, at the moment, I've already been leveling it, so it'll be the flat part. I'll then drop the router down. Do a lever, make sure it's off. Drop it down, click that on, have it go up, slide it back, and then the, I think this is a thing on all routers, but just the dial one click down. You want it to be a couple of mil, so probably about two mil drop. Drop it down, whoop, I think that's still on it there. Whoop. Tie it up and then slide it across to the right side. So for the setup I've got at the moment, I want it to be leveling from the right side. And what I'll do is get it in place, pull it to turn it on and pull it towards me. Because I'm doing it that way, it means that all the dust will be shooting diagonally into the corner at the back there. If I started from the front and went back, then that means all the chippings would be shooting towards me instead because of the way it works. So I finished doing the rest uh, off camera, but as you can see here, we've just got a little notch here left to finish, which is barely anything because it's on the corner. So I'll probably just leave that. If I just slide this back and forth, you can see just how much dust has been cr created in the box, um, which is absolute bugger all for the amount that was made. The area it does seem to build up now is between the pipes at the back, but the moment that starts to build up, the pipes collect it, or the holes in the base catch it. Move this back now and we get back to the cookie. So obviously you'll probably see, I, I can't tell that there, but I keep getting told that there, there are lines where the router has been um, cutting. The way we get around this on my router is we are able to lower it by a tenth of a mil per click. So we drop it by um, five clicks, so half a mil, and just slowly move it over there, and then all the lines are gone, and it's then ready for a very, very quick um, sanding with um, the belt sander or the random orbital. So as you can see, this is a lot quicker to level the pieces of wood compared to my uh, drum sander, which I showed in a previous video. I really wish I'd had this earlier. Um, after uh, getting part way through designing it and using it, I had it pointed out to me that I've effectively made a CNC machine. Um, and I should, probably should have bought one of those in the first place. But have you seen their prices? Um, no, no, I, I don't need four mortgages to, to buy one of those, thanks. Um, so yeah, this, this has been a great uh, upgrade, and especially when I've got, ooh, I think I've got 250 cookies to do now. Uh, for this next kiln load. 
So yeah, if, if you've got a lot of work to do, these are definitely worthwhile. I might in the future look at doing a much larger one for tables, but that's going to be in the distant future because I need a very big box for that. So yep, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask below. I was going to just finish the video, but then I realised explaining how the um, direction you use the router in affects the chippings is one thing, but I figured I might as well actually show you. So I've set the router quite deep. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going as deep as I'm going, but uh, it'll give you a better idea of uh, how much chippings come off in the direction. Uh, apparently it wasn't coming up very well on the uh, camera. So we'll see how this goes. So the last clip I did uh, didn't come out very well on the camera. So I'm just going to do a quick explanation of what I'm doing this time. I'm going to cut it from the back corner to the front and keep going until I reach the halfway point. I'm then going to turn the router off and reset it. So I'm going to start cutting from the front to the back. And hopefully you should see the difference in the way the dust starts flying from the machine. So I'm going to turn it on now and see how all this uh, goes. Now I've uh, been covered in dust and choked, uh, hopefully that gives you a, uh, a good idea of why the direction you push the router in makes a big difference. I don't know if it came through on the recording, but um, the router also cuts easier from back to front rather than front to back um, due to the way the actual blade itself uh, spins. So yeah. It's Better on the machine, 
and better on you, so you're not getting blasted by chippings and dust if you um, do it from the right side. Right, so thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you liked it. Uh, don't forget to check out the website, visionlessdesigns.com, where you'll find all my products to help support the channel, as well as links to all my social media and Etsy store. Links are also in the description below. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. See you in future videos.